But anyway, guys, every, everybody, welcome back. This is Zenith versus IG. This is a losers bracket match in the Gigabyte Dota Masters, proudly sponsored by Gigabyte, of course. Zenith versus IG, first match in the best of three series, and of course, both teams need to win it to stay in it. Otherwise, they're going to go home with absolutely nothing. And gods, tonight, I think IG have just come off against a vic uh, off in a victory against eHome, whereas Zenith they have lost one to, uh, two to one against Orange Esports, so Zenith probably a little bit shaky at the moment, but they've decided to ban up the Broodmother first. Interesting choice. And IG are going to ban the Lycan, of course. Nobody likes that Lycan guy. Oh yeah, especially when you don't have that first pick, and I think that Brood ban is Lancer, because that game where IG just beat Eho, and they did in fact have a Brood from when I caught at the end of it. Uh, by then it was already about 40 minutes in, and Brood was absolutely massive, so maybe catching that, deciding, nah, we don't want to verse that, we don't want to deal with that, they are going to ban that one out, and something to be able to notice, it's actually Loda doing the picks and bans this game, so uh, Zenith mixing things up a bit here, as we will see Shadow Demon being banned out as well, and it is Zenith with that first pick, so we'll probably see some of those other top picks being banned out, maybe see Chen and Enchantress taking a ban here, a lot of these Chinese teams don't like to verse and deal with them, especially that Chen. Yeah, they, Chen is just one of those annoying heroes. He can make key heroes really difficult to get rid of. His Mr. Attrition, very, very difficult to kill people under his watch. We'll see what else they get rid of. IG, they've got a few options open. In fact, something that's in the Chinese team's ban a lot, also the Furion. Everybody's hating on him as well. His mid-game map control is very, very annoying. Also, that Darkseer. Again, another popular ban. In fact, everybody's really wary of this guy just because he's got such versatility and such great utility he can bring to any, just about any lineup. And of course, Iron Shell just hurts. It's Iron Shell is just really just flat out a nasty spell to play against. But God's final bands coming out. Do you think we'll see? I don't know. It looks like we might see Chen or Enchantress slip through here in case Zenith want to put her to work. Yeah, I mean, at least one of them should be going through the pool here. They haven't really favoured Enchantress all that much, but they do like to use that Chen. And uh, as a result, with them having the first pick, I imagine they won't be banning it out here. Although plenty of heroes left in the pool because of some of these bands, Brood and Shadow Demon. This leaves, I mean, you're looking at Prophet, Invoker, still in the pool. Same goes for that winner we saw being banned by Zenith last game. And that's a hero that these Chinese teams love for the lane control that it can bring. And Zenith as well would like to use it. And definitely we'll see that hero probably being picked up in the first three picks for one of these two teams. Yeah, I don't think we'll see anything crazy this match. Of course, Zenith did in game two against RNG Sports. They tried a gyrocopter pick. Didn't really work out for them all too well. Uh, it seemed to be sort of a poor man's the Shrek, really. But they've decided to ban off the Chaos Knight as well. A lot of people really hating on that guy. And this is interesting. I think they're just really worried. They don't really want to use him themselves. Like, they've got the first pick. They really wanted him. They could have picked him up. But they're just like you said. Like, everybody's a little bit worried that the other guy's going to pick him. It's worried that they don't really... They're not comfortable dealing with it just yet. Chen, though, the final ban for IG, which leaves Enchantress on the board if Zenith want to make use of her. Of course, she is a relatively popular pick, but by no means an insta-lock. In well, we've seen it. We've seen a gyrocopter. I really want to see a Chaos Knight one of these days, and uh, it doesn't seem like the day is going to be today. But uh, the Invoker being left in the pool, Zenith going to first pick that right away. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the chat saying, "Come on, I just wanted to see Ferrari play Invoker." Apparently, Ferrari got to play Invoker. Yep. I wasn't here for it, but it he did yesterday. get to play Invoker, and uh, that was oh, I guess that. Damn it, I miss Ferrari playing Invoker. But I'm sure that would have made a lot of the viewers happy. It is his signature hero, but Invoker going to be on Zen's hands, and that's probably, well, I don't know, does Ice Ice snowing play there, Invoker, or it could be HYH, well, it'll be one of those two here, as IG now with a double pick, we'll see what they want to get, Profits on the pool, so is the winner, so is Chen, oh no, sorry, not Chen, what I'm talking about, Chen got banned out by IG, so is Enchantress, is who I meant to say, and uh, yeah, a lot of options for IG, we'll see what they want to go, Lestrac, also another possibility for them, if they want that strong mid-game DPS from Lashrak. There we go, that Windrunner being picked up first, and they are, wow, just go straight for the Andy Mage. Says, you know what, we're gonna go for that late game, and I think IG, this is a kind of, this is kind of IG's thing, when their backs are against the wall, they tend to get very, very turtly, very, very defensive, and just play extremely safe. So I think the tempo of this match is probably gonna be set by Zen. Then again, this is what I said for their last match, the last match for the Nakar, said, you know what, it's IG, Versus, I forget who it was, but it was one of IG's matches. I said, you know what, this game is going to be slow as slow as all hell. Watch out, everybody. This is going to take forever. I think this was their match against eHome, actually. Was, what was yesterday's Was it IG versus eHome yesterday? I think it was. I'm pretty sure that was yesterday's game. And yeah, basically, I yeah. said I said that the first game is going to be terribly slow. There's nothing going to happen. And then all of a sudden, just complete and utter non-stop action. Everybody carnage all over the map. The second game was really slow. Both teams kind of really getting really turtly then, but... 
as it was. Anyway, so Venomancer are going to pick up... Oh, sorry, is Zenith going to pick up Venomancer here? I think it's another soul pick. Actually, here we haven't seen all that much of, but he's always been a nice, strong little utility hero. And of course, he's missed the panic buttons. If anybody's trying to get aggressive push early, he's a hero that can just drop all of his spells and just chase everybody away. Even if he doesn't pick up a kill, it's just... He pops He pops his bucket of aids on them, and then suddenly everybody's like, well, don't really want to stick around. Just want to back off straight away. So it's a hero that you kind of want to get an early pipe against, if at all possible. Remaining. Yeah, no, exactly. It's kind of, even as a support here, that ultimate, once you get level 6, can do some decent damage in team fight, really set up some kills uh, for someone to clean up with. But they haven't really got a clean up here as of yet. Invoker and Prophet don't have that sort of great mobility. In, once the team fight kicks off, Prophet is mobile around the map, but in a team fight itself, it's not like a Queen of Pain where you can blink around, clean up all those kills. And uh, Queen of Pain to hear that, and Zenith may want to consider here to finish off their sort of. Uh, Three farmers. They can invoke it, profit, profit in the side lane, invoke it, mid in something like a Queen of Pain and the safe lane, depending on whether or not they want to get a hard carry or not. They didn't go for a hard carry with their second or third pick, which makes me think they're not going to go for that Morphin, or at least if they wanted it, they wouldn't have picked it up already. They just want to go for some strong lanes, some strong range heroes to really harass down this anti -Mage. And it's going to be up to IG to find somewhere where anti -Mage can farm. Zenith maybe going to want to go put something like an aggressive trial in at top. Maybe IG decide to send anti -Mage mid as a result. And we'll probably see some of those sort of defensive support heroes being banned out by Zenith here. Maybe even see a Lich ban as it does synergize well with the anti -Mage. if you want to do a dual lane at mid. Uh, I don't know if they will though, but Earthshaker being picked up by IG, no real surprise. I mean, they pick this hero almost every single freaking game just because Chuan wants it, I think. They just try and grab it from every single game. It's, it's very, very common for them to pick this hero up. I would not be surprised if the Lich sort of gets taken out of the mix as well, but we'll see. We will see. And also, Zen I think Zenith are probably just more concerned about getting their pushing heroes down. Just getting the mid-game control heroes rather than just going straight for the hard carry. Because a hard carry is relatively easy. As long as you get the supports in, a hard carry is pretty easy to slot in. But I don't. I, I honestly think picking the hard carry this early, you generally really need to like centralize your game plan around it. I think Zenith probably want a more flexible lineup to begin with before they really just buckle down and figure out what they want. Yeah, uh, no, I agree with that. They want to be uh, to keep things as flexible as possible here. And uh, IG now, two more bans coming their way. I mean, with the Venomanta a likely support, uh, they may want to ban out some of those sort of more teamfight-oriented heroes. They could ban something like a Sanking, which could be a secondary support. We saw um, XY play that in uh, one of the games already. Night Stalk is going to be banned. There goes a slider from IG, so uh, that's sort of a tanky frontline hero who can be annoying and can go head-to-head -head with an Antimage, especially before Antimage gets too farmed. I'm kind of expecting something like a Crystal Bane. Some kind of range support's going to get picked up by IG next, because they unless they're planning for the Windrunner to fit into that role, but I kind of doubt it at this point in time. But and I, I'm thinking we're going to see another range support here, like the Lich or the Crystal Maiden, something like that, to go with the Earthshaker and the anti mage and just to give them some nice nuke, and just because at the moment the double melee lane is not that fantastic from the anti mage just yet. But they definitely have some options open. In the meanwhile, the Night Stalker is banned off there. Zenith did try to run a Slada last match. I don't know. I'm really not sure about the Slada pick so far. I mean, I love the hero, but I haven't really seen him be all that effective in many games. He's sort of semi-effective in some. I mean, DK have run some relatively effective Sladas, but I just don't know. Especially not the way some of the Chinese teams have been utilizing. They've just really been getting aggressive and throwing him in the mid lanes and stuff. I just feel like he's almost sort of a flavor of the month thing, really. Yeah, and uh, the Tidehunter is going to be picked up for Xanth, and that, I mean, it gives them that big team fight. I mean, it's kind of like, I, oh, I don't know, Sanking, I, I mean, we've gone over this before, I prefer the Sanking, but Tidehunter, it is much more sort of uh, reliable and uh, just sort of an instant big team fight, whereas Sanking has to be a bit more, um, a bit more careful with his positioning. He's not someone, he's someone that, that you can focus down, whereas Tidehunter, you're trying to avoid Sanking, if you can lock him down and kill him, it's great, and with an ES and Winner, that can be a lot of harasses that you can just use from range on a hero like Sankey. So Tidehunter, it is going to be. And we'll see whether... It's probably going to be a tide support here with the Tide and Venom as the two supports. They'll want to pick up some kind of carry with this last pick. Maybe even transition into that Morphling. Let's see what they go for. I mean, they could even go for some kind of semi-carry. I mean, something like the Shrek, I think, is still perfectly viable in this lineup. It can provide lots of push if they want to get aggressive early. Just go, you know what, let's get a lot of quick towers, make it really hard for anti mage to have any room to farm on this map. Oh, like you said, they could just pick up some kind of hard carry stuff like ODs left on the board. Morphling's still there. They could go for... They've got a lot of options open, I feel. And or they could pick a punch. That also, I guess, is a valid option. Wow. I, well, I think this is something they'd probably... <laughs> I remember I saying uh, before the game began, uh, 
up against their old teammate, uh, Chuan. Well, he wasn't really, he was never really an official team member because he's always been in IG. He never left IG, but he was playing with Xanth in Dota 2. And they did say some, wasn't, uh, wasn't not the friendliest back, words. Wasn't that back when he What's was that? in um, Tong Fu? Or got the, no, no, wait, no, Chuan. no, wait. Wrong, wrong team, wrong team. That was, that was Lan M. Sorry, I'm getting my, yeah. I'm getting my Chinese drama Chuan, mixed up. Chuan has been in IG for, for years, well, not years and years. IG's only been around for about one year now, but he's been with IG for a long time. He was just playing Dota 2 with Zenith, but uh, Ice wants to take him down. They want to defeat him, and they're going to try to do so with a punch. And what? Brewmaster still in the pool, makes it this deep in, and Brewmaster is a great pick here for IG. Good against Pudge, good against Tidehunter, just great against any team fight, just as a complete sort of... It's, it's, he's like the anti-team fight hero. You blink in and engage, and you can do so on heroes like Tidehunter, like Venomancer. I mean, if you get hooked in by a Pudge, you can try and pop the, you can pop the ultimate if you're fast enough. Not to mention with an ES Vision or a Winner Shackle Shot, there should be an opportunity to get it off. It's just a great hero to have here for IG, and something I'm just surprised man so far. And it, well, it's just a great counter to Zenith lineup. I believe we called him like the replacement for Tidehunter. Tidehunter was being used for quite some time, like when he was really popular. He was being used as a frontline brawler and just being a big bully, standing up the front of the fight and causing a mess and just daring teams to try and get past him. Also, that's a freaking awesome squid, although I like the pirate sword better. But there you go, he's got squid. He's got the squid, which actually leaves some kind of slime trail. But going back to the actual match itself, we've got a five man sweep. It looks like we're going to have a bit of a clash in a second, although the smoke gets blown off as Tyner actually backs up and hesitates for a second and changes his mind. Can we see anything happen here? The gush goes down on the Brewmaster. Fissure, though, one of the best defensive stuns in the game. They will pop down the blocking ward. Charging through, though, I don't think they can land anything here, and they will just need to back up. Although Pudge yeah. still searching for a kill. I don't think he's going to find anything, though. Fact, no, and it is going to be Loader on the Pudge as well. So, wow, another fissure goes through. And that's getting a bit of a block with a power shot. This is not good for Zenith. They get the Gale. They may get the first blood. Suicide from Pudge. Oh, and HY, HY is going to go down. So, so far, IG. They're coming out on top. Even though they get the first blood, they're going to get the extra kills here. And I don't think the damage is done yet. Tidehunter going to go down. Faith with a level 1 Ether Shock. Does so much damage to a single target at level 1. One of the best level 1 nukes. 140 damage there. 4 kills Holy on crap, Zenith that does although, the, although the first one was Pudge with a Suicide. That denied the first blood there. So it was, it was essentially only 3 kills for IG. And the first blood did go Zenith way. But still, IG do come out on top there. Joe, the anti -mage, not taking too much damage. He did get just get 2 assists. But still, he's going to be quite happy in this top lane. And should be able to farm up that Ring of Health pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm just looking at anti mage now. Oh, yeah, wow. Fair enough then. So he is definitely feeling pretty pretty at the moment. As it looks like we're going to have a tri lane up top. It's going to be. Part I don't know about this dual melee tri lane. Like, I suppose. Oh, well, I suppose he's up against the R2 dual melee tri lanes, but I really don't know about the Pudge tri lane here because he's really, really level dependent. And this is going to sap levels from. Maybe they're hoping to. No, that's not going to work. But they might be hoping to use the Serpent Wards, the Plague Wards rather, to sort of just try and farm the jungle a little bit, but. I don't think this is going to work too well. Bottom line, we've got Prophet against Wingrat. That's a pretty even matchup for the most part. Prophet didn't even use the trees last hit, and HYH has actually got some cosmetics that make him look a bit naked, in fact. <laughs> they do seem to uh, blend in very much, but he's got. Uh, I feel as if half the time Xanth is picking Let's pick this here because we've got some cool items for it. <laughs> oh. Wait, what? Oh, right, he's got the random robes on him at the moment. The, druid yeah. ro the druidic robes. I, just, I really don't know how this Pudge is going. Loader gets Fissure blocked in. This is really bad news. In fact, having to burn... He's only got one Tango. Can't eat his way free. Here comes another kill for Anti-Mage. Oh, nope, it's a suicide. Pudge managing to slip that in there, but still a pretty poor result for them in the end. And Titan had put down an Observe Ward. I'm pretty sure that was a big misclick there. He did not mean to put down an Observe Ward. Maybe trying to use a Clarity. I think I was or, trying to tangle him like out, actually. Um, that would have made yeah. sense to cut yeah, the last yeah, that, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree with that. And, uh, yeah, Antimage gets denied of the kill, but still, it's just more into farm, and that's loaded, just falling further and further behind. He's now 0-2. I, I think, I think the rumor mill's already running, the, like, the hardcore fanboys for Zenith are already conspiring, saying, okay, obviously, obviously they picked the Gyrocopter pick against Orange to throw the match, they threw the match against Orange to make sure... IG were completely off guard against him, and then to think, mess things up even further, Zenith now busy throwing at the start of this match here with crazy plays left, right and centre, trying to lull IG into a false sense of security before crushing Chuan in the next two matches. That's, that's the conspiracy mill, I think, at the moment. 
That's what I'm going for. <laughs> There's all conspiracies all around here, but all that what's happening right now is not going well for Zenith and uh, this is uh, Joe at top lane. He's going to get that ring of health up fairly soon. Uh, it's not the easiest time up against the trial, but he's making a good job of it. And they have got that creep pull now as well with that sentry ward, making sure they can deal with it. Mid lane, Ferrari on the Brewmaster as a solo is pretty much even on CS, and that's not what you'd hope for from an invoker. Ice is going to be looking to harass him as much as possible, but Bottle is already up, and he's using Bottle Crowing by the looks of it. Yep, he uses up the full Bottle, sends the career right back to base, and he's going to bring that back with a full Bottle. It looks like right now none of those side lanes do in fact need. Anthony is going for the Ring of Health. We know I can just go for the phase boots from the side shop uh, as needed. So basically, Brewmaster can just have that courier for the next couple of minutes to use Bottle Crowing if he needs. And this is what you were talking about. The aggressive trial is up here for uh, Zenith, and they've got the Sunstrike Invoker in the mid, but they just haven't really had an opportunity to really abuse it just yet. And with the lack of stuns as well, I don't. I feel this would have worked a lot better if they had a couple of good power stuns, like a Sven, anything with great power stuns up here, or even just a lockdown, like a Crystal Maiden or something, because. The issue is they're not gonna. They're, it's gonna be very difficult to land the sunstrike on the anti mage. And again, Loader getting blocked in. Can he get free? No, he can't. Eats his way free. Actually, he does have to have more tangos. Somebody must have pulled them to him because he actually ran it. Last time he got blocked in, he ran out of tangos. That was why I'm pretty sure XY was trying to cut him free with the observer ward. Well, I think he I was going. Like, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe just bought some more when he, he respawned because he is having such a hard time. He's going to tango his way through into a better position. Look for a hook at top. It's a level 2 hook, so uh, some decent range on it now. If you can figure out where the ES is, that is a potential kill. And with this Observer Ward, that, that ward by Tide is actually going to be pretty useful. They've cut down enough trees, it gives some good lane vision and could set up some hooks, although I don't think you want to go on the Antimate. Antimate will just blink right out and uh, we will see ES using that nuke pool, using those creeps as a bit of a shield and going to scout out both Tide and Pudge trying to come on in. Titan Pudge, actually it's going to go in there, get stunned by the Sindor, I think it's going to try and jack these creep if they can, Anti-Mage actually moving in though, the Fissure goes down, blocking off Tide, he can't really get them there to help, going to get taken out, although there comes the Sunstrike, now they might actually get the Sunstrike, will get the kill on Anti-Mage, so finally that pays dividends, as Pudge thinking about how he can get free without getting intercept, meanwhile the Blink, oh the Teleport and Gank there from HYHY, and now he's up, he's level 6 actually, he's level 6, busy pushing away on this town, they may actually bust this down in the end, because it doesn't look like anybody's really able to rotate. Brewmaster's not ready. Windrunner's busy in the bottom lane. Although she could, although she's only level 5. She could come up here if she wants to. If she put ten, she could teleport up, try and hold this off. Although it looks like they're going to cancel the push and they're just going to back up for now. HYHY probably going to return to his lane. But they did a considerable amount of damage to this tower. So the next time that happens, that tower is definitely going to disappear. Yeah, that was... I mean, that not only did they do some damage to the tower, that kill me anti is going to help them out a lot. Um, not to the much, I mean, kill, chain down the enemy carry always great, but just getting some momentum going their way, Pudge hitting a hook, Invoker laying the Sunstrike, or give them just a boost to their confidence, and they can now just say, okay, we can get some kills, even on this anti make sure he's going to blink, but all we have to do is land some hooks, and with the Venom and Tide slows, they can maybe do that, as we will see. ES and Shaman just forced to play so defensive, so far back. And sure, anti can and get at the creeps and farm, but for the most part, it's not an easy lane. Sunstrike is, I hear it somewhere. It wasn't even close. Sure it, was. it was top lane, okay. missed completely. Okay. Uh, he was just trying to harass the support sitting at the back, but didn't manage to land anything there. They heard it coming in, probably just moved. Said, all right, time to move. Meanwhile, in mid, though, 22-3 for the Brewmaster. Invoker is currently sitting 25-7. and 7. I think it's mostly because he's not abusing Cold Snap. Sure, he's got a lot of... He's got a good amount of damage with the Exhort, but... Brewmaster is relatively tanky, plus he's shuttling the Courier back and forth, and he's just spamming Thunderclap this year, so it's pretty easy for him at the moment. Without that Cold Snap, he doesn't have... He, doesn't have, he has barely anything to fear with the Invoker there. Especially yeah, since there's no uh, random gankers either, they're busy up top. Oh yeah, uh, I mean Titan Venom could always smoke and go look for a roam towards mid lane, they haven't actually got a smoke at the moment. Uh, but all in all, it's not an easy lane to gank. Speaking of ganks, here we go, we pass the six, 6 minute mark and that means Zenith have no wards up unless they free void. Brewmaster is at top, will come into the tide, clap with a fissure block. I don't know if they can get too many more, but Brewmaster's been slow. And uh, oh, he's going to go in, he takes out Shaman. And, uh-oh, Sunstrike as well. That'll all oh, just misses by the looks of things. Brewmaster is looking to go on the hunt. He's got a clap as well as a Primal Split. Nice clap. He's not even going to need an ultimate. Winner and getting the last hit there. YYF teeping in from the bottom lane, much like Prophet did as well. As uh, Prophet's now come back towards the middle lane, we'll see some pressure on this tier 1 mid towers then. I mean, they're managing to pressure down some towers here. Well, not so much. They haven't taken down towers. Obviously, they're going to get the top tower. It does get denied. But mid tower as well. 
Zenit, I mean, they're applying pressure, they're keeping is, IG on the back foot as much as possible. This is one of the things Snoopy was talking about. Sometimes these aggressive trials aren't so much to try and shut down a carry, it's to get the other team to overreact and move and try and fight in the other lane. And then immediately, because you have superior mobility, in this case he was talking about the Tri-Lane Night Stalker, as well as having the Fury on the same team, he's pointing out that you have much better mobility, so it's much easier for you to move to another lane and then just to push stuff down. So actually get the deny there on the tower in mid though. Nature's Prophet does actually pick off the Invoker. Sorry, not, not pick off the Invoker, pick off who the was Shaman. that? Sorry, that was, that's, that's the assist there, my bad. Picking off the Shadow Shaman, killing his teammate, what am I saying? It's too <laughs> late, it's 2.30 in the morning, it's too late. But there's the anti-mage note, they throw in the fissure, but don't actually pick anything off there in the end. Yeah, no, that's what they're saying, like you saw exactly what happened. Like, they, Brewmaster came top to fight, they traded for a kill, they managed to, well, traded for two for one, I think it was. They got the Raster and then lost Tidehunter to Pudge, but at the same time, they went mid and went for a push. In the end, it didn't quite work out because the tower got denied, but the general strategy is there. And they also get the top tower down as well at the same time. So I think this is actually, this is working. Although, obviously, not off to the best start. They don't want Pudge. Pudge died a few too many times, and obviously that first clash before the rune, uh, before the horn blown was not optimal at all. I don't think yeah, it was yeah. Oh, apart from that fight, things have actually gone all right for Zenith. I mean, they've given a lot of space for Antonate to farm. It looks like, has he gone for the Vanguard, or is he going for a Battle Fury? It looks like he... Actually, no, I think it's he's, a Battle he's, Fury. Oh, no, he's some treads. Okay, no, he, I was about to say, he had the Ring of Health. I was about to say, where's his gold going? I'm like, I'm complete... Complete brain fight. He bought treads, and now we're going to see a shackle coming in. Ice in a lot of trouble. He's going to try to switch to Ghost Walk fast. Bit of a block forces the Antimage ultimate, and uh, that's just to make sure Invoker did not use a Ghost Walk and get away. That would have been absolutely disastrous if that had happened. And now this top T1 tower. It looks like IG want to apply some pressure. They've got Brewmaster at top. He's got the level six. He's goes ultimate, and that could be another thing for IG if they can make something happen here. Pudge in the trees, looking for a hook though. But again, you see the Windrun of the Brewmaster and the S all head top, and then immediately, rotation from HYHY pushes the bottom tower. They've lost another tower, and the teleports are up here to defend against any kind of push, and well, the de on the die side, they're all backing off once again. So now they've lost a lot of map control, and this is where Pudge gets dangerous. They've lost a lot of map control, and now the Anti-Mage is under a lot of pressure, especially if the Peace Heroes like, start inhabiting his jungle, and just, like, here we go, he goes to farm the hard camp, and there meets... X Freedom, who chases him off. This is a lot of pressure, and this is how we stop things like Lycan, Andy Mage, just stellar and farm. Just go and sit in their jungle. This denies mid lane to them, denies the top lane to them, and also denies the jungle. So now they're really running out of places to farm. See, again, see, he's trying to farm, but he's about to get hooked here, possibly. I don't think Pudge has seen him yet, though. But he's under a lot of pressure, and he's not going to be able to farm that quickly anymore. So I think this is going to become troublesome for IG in the next few minutes. And especially now with Venomance having a very offensive observer in the Dire Jungle, just to scout out the anti mages movements around. And uh, they've still got three heroes lurking around this jungle. Pudge is going to scout this anti mage here. anti mage is going to go for this big creep. We could see a hook into a dismember. Is there backup? There's the Venomancer. Hook. Ulti going to come. That could be a dead anti mage. It looks like it will be. Loader. Latching on, and uh, there you go, Anthony King's award, he says there's a award here. Yes, yeah, there must be a award there, but this is exactly what I mean. Now they know, now he knows that Zenith are hunting his jungle, he knows that the top lane is going to be in a lot of pressure, he won't want to sit in the mid lane either, so this pretty much leaves, well, go and farm the bottom lane, and they're missing towers left, right and centre, you see Furion in their jungle as well, this also, if they've got this strong presence in the jungle, they can push this second tier top tower, and with Furion, if they need to defend a lane, somebody is always available to go and defend. And now they're going to try and counter ward here, and Pudge is set up for a hook, although Primal Split is going to mess up his day. In fact, they're going to need to back up here. Is there reinforcements? Tide under is too far away to help. He is a little bit out of position. The Shackle down, but here comes the Sunstrike, doing a lot of damage to Faith. Ravage gets popped way too early there. Only hits the ES. Needed to wait just a few seconds for that. Now this is going to go terribly for Zenith, although Pudge is actually still alive. I'm actually surprised he's still alive. Venomancer goes down, they might actually continue fighting this. Pudge is actually healing up, but the main issue is Ravage is down, that did get fired too early. YYF in some trouble now, the hook lands, Chaos Meteor as well, doesn't land. They drop the dismember on top of Joe. Joe's going to blink out though. Also the deafening blast throwing through there as well. Here comes Fury on his back in the mix. Gonna throw it in the sprout. Accidentally misses there. Throws down the wart, the treants, the tree puppets to block, locking him in. Look at that block there. That is fantastic. Thunderclapping and fissuring his way out though, so he should be able to escape. The mischance also frustrating him here. He is stomping something. The hook in. Can they get the kill there? The shackle goes down, and they will just manage to pick off the pudge. I think Zen is being slightly too aggressive here, although I hear a sunstrike sun it lands! Invoker! Oh. Ice! Fantastic Sunstrike! 
just got away from the, the Pudge. Pudge didn't get a chance to use Rock because he was stun locked, and then I says, well, I guess I'll clean up then if you don't want to kill Pudge. And wow, what a big team fight. And I agree, Zenith got very aggressive there, but Pudge surviving. He then used two urns on himself to heal himself back up, and he, he came back in, caught IG by surprise, it seems. IG got on the back foot early, but Zenith just overextending a little bit, though. Although they do get away with a Brewmaster kill with a Sunstrike. I think it's still okay for Zenith. The more, the more aggressive they are, the less time Anthony is to fight. Fights like that, where sure, maybe it's a 3 for 4 or a 2 for 3 trade, whatever it is, even if they lose an extra hero, it's still time where Anthony is not farming. And Zenith's heroes already have up most of their early game core items. They don't need to get a mass amount of farm. They just need to put on pressure, pressure, and more pressure. I like the fact that they've actually moved, uh, IG, they've moved a ward away. This is a normal spot where. Raster is counter warding out. They moved away because they know there's going to be a huge counter war battle up there. And they figure, well, if we keep putting wards here anyway, they're just going to get picked off regardless because they're going to be searching for this. So they moved over here just to give vision. It's not optimal, but it's going to watch anti mages back regardless. It's going to make sure he can farm this hard camp. They'll want one down around about this area as well just to watch this approach here, but they've also got to keep an eye out for the hooks, etc. And there we go. There's that other, or the threat of the counter war looking for this. Will they spot it? It is just out of range. Oh. Ah, oh, that's Man. frustrating. And that is going to help Xanath out so much. They know exactly what's going on. They can be... It's not as useful as that other Observer would spot, but as far as it goes, it's, it's nice. And look at that. They set up another hook for Loda. Wow. I don't know if he knows there's a... I mean, he may know there's a ward there, although it depends whether or not Tidehunter could see him. He may just assume Tidehunter was spotting him up there. But I really like the fact that they did the smart thing IG did, and they moved their wards around making sure they're not in the obvious spot because they've only you've only got so many wards so even if they lose a couple like see Zenith again they're quite happy just to trade wards because they know with, even without vision anti-mage is not going to if they, even if they lose vision to gank anti-mage without vision anti-mage is not going to want to farm there anyway so they're quite happy just to basically trade left right and center and it's mutually assured destruction which I guess for Zenith line of it works so much better for them now they're going to keep pushing mid though, there's another tower down at 40 minutes, in fact they've taken 4 towers by 15 minutes at the moment, and now again, the mobility from the Zenith team just going to teleport back, defend their own towers against pushes, and just deny all of that gold from, yeah. all that gold from IG as a smoke up, they're looking for a gank in mid once again. Oh yeah, I mean, Zenith just want to keep the, keep it coming, not for, not give up for a second, they're just unrelenting. Loader can be looking for a hook here, we know needs to be very careful with the positioning there. Probably not expecting anything coming in, and there we go. Loader getting revealed, but they're not going to get spoiled. Hook on the ES. Sunstrike's going to get the kill. And down goes the ES. One at mid. Doesn't even have boots yet. This is actually struggle and some people, for IG after such a great start. And some people might be wondering why is Punch like, pulsing his rod. It's actually because it causes less damage to himself that way while still doing pretty much, I think it's pretty much full damage. Hooks in, lands it on the Brewmaster. What a hook. However, Primal Split doesn't land the Dismember in time. Actually, it's on cooldown. Uh, he was a little bit overzealous there and it's actually going to pay the price. I think he just got a little bit greedy. As Fury unblocks him with Trance because he's a bit of a jerk like that. And H -way, H -way. It gets his a suicide, third suicide, of, the suicide of the game. He has been so... Well, some of them lucky, but some of them have just been IG unable to prevent him from suicide. Like that one at top lane, Antimage just sort of gave him an opportunity to, to kill himself. And uh, maybe it's coming down to the ping somewhere. I mean, IG do have about 200 MS to uh, Zenith's 50 or so, but still, it sh he shouldn't be allowed to get all these suicides off. IG neither time those last six bit better. Mm, definitely, it looks like they are going to push this top tower successfully. No contestion from IG that's going to let that one go. They show up, well they do show up actually, but way too late. And look at Faith, boy is he squishy. He's one of the downsides to playing that support raster. He needs to get in relatively close to get that shackle down, the, the hex down, and it's, it's a little vulnerable to getting nuked down as we've seen, or he's been getting hooked well, actually all game. It's he's the hard support, but mm. at least he's got a brace set and boots. I mean, looking at this ES, 350 gold. Hasn't really been buying wards, I don't believe. He's seen mostly Shadow Shaman, but this has been 0-2. He's got 6 assists, but it doesn't seem like he's had any farm of any sort here. Just sitting on a magic wand. Well, the Raster has actually been able to spam Aether Shock a little bit to clean up farm yeah. whenever it's available. Whereas ES has, without those Arcane Boots, he can't afford to. Because it means other, if he's doing that, he's going to be running back and forth every game. Oh, wow, look at that Sunstrike and Chaos Media. And he gets him! The Forge Spirits on their last shred of health. They actually clean up a kill. That is fantastic. So it looks like they're gonna pay. He's gonna pay the price though. And he will actually no, no, he won't go down because the power shot beforehand cleaned up the tree he wanted to shackle him to. That is unfortunate. Power shot though in the end gonna clean up the invoker. 
just managing to finally cinch that one, but Invoker, Ice, or is that HY, HY, I think it's Ice actually, playing possibly, yeah, it's Ice, playing the best damn Invoker of his life, I'm going to say. Oh yeah, he's, he's playing pretty damn well here, having a very big impact on this game, creating space, sure he goes down, but he is providing space, they're going to get another tier 2 tower, another tower going down way, that is going to be their last out of tower for IG. IG are now stuck in their base, and this very early Antimate pick in the draft could come back to bite them in the asses right now. He just does not have the farm he needs. He's going to have that battle fury up in a minute or so, but it's going to be around a 20 minute battle fury, and even then, Xanth are going to be knocking on the doors of IG's base, looking to take a rack soon. Hook, okay, not going to land that one, but I mean, he's got arcane boots. Just keep on throwing them. It doesn't matter. The hooks you miss, they don't matter. All that matters is the hooks that you actually hit. Definitely. I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Even if anti Mage gets the 18 16 minute battle fury, it doesn't really matter because Xanath is like, you know what, we're ending the game before you're relevant anyway. Sure, you got a battle fury, but what are you going to do? Jump in, try and fight Invoker in a cold snap or Tidehunter? It's just not going to work. He just doesn't have. He just doesn't have the strength to stay in the fight. He's just too damn squishy. So I would not be surprised even if he gets the battle fury right now. In fact, he's only 200 gold away from it. Even if he gets it right now, it's just not going to be an issue. Also, love these plague wards. They're giving load of vision without even getting in the way of his hooks. He's probably loving these, giving him so much vision, yeah. he knows exactly, and look at the ice, IG, they're all the way back, you're like, nah, let's get nowhere near that pudge. Do not want to get near the him at all. The problem is for Xantho that they haven't got much DPS to actually punish IG attack. They can't chip away at the tower, really. Well, Apart from Invoker with the Forge Spirits, they haven't really got all too much. I mean, that that's worked for Na'Vi in the past. I mean, this is that yeah. was something Dendi's done, just sit there... But just sit there spamming minions. They've also got Nature's Prophet, of course, who can push in there. Just oh, yes. and with the play wards as well. I think they'll get it. I mean, their time is on their side. It's only 19 and a half minutes in. They've got at least a good 15 minutes before they really need to worry about Anti Mage. And there we go. Move in again. Get some Trance on it. Get some Forge Spirits on it. Summon some more. Keep going. It's down a half health. The hook goes in. There goes the Brewmaster. They're going to force this fight away from the tower. They're going to charge out because they know they've got to stop this. They can't let this keep having great shackle shot though. Here comes a Ravage. Going to counter initiate here. Chaos Meteor as well. Look at that land. The bite down on Joe. Joe is down. Echo Slam going to finish off Pudge. And Joe running for his life here. Invoker's looking for the kill. He's pinging. They know he's there. Kill the poison. Poison gets him. Anti Mage is down. There's still a bit of a fight going on here, I think. Or is that illusions? I think it was possibly illusions showing up on my map there. I saw a ton of X's for no good reason. Well, like, another punch suicide. <laughs> did, seriously, did he suicide again? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That is. That is ridiculous. How does he. No, no, no. This, this, is this the point where if I was playing, I would be flipping, flipping the damn table because he just had so many, it's not fair. The shackle shot, though, pinning down both X Freedom as well as XY. Four staff away, though, for XY. So it looks like X Freedom is going to die. Who's got that four staff? Who has that four staff? Is it in oh, it's Invoker. Okay, I was about to say, Tide doesn't appear to have a force, neither does Venomancer. Loader is coming back in though. Time gonna teleport home, and they still haven't. They still haven't given away a single tower. Fury on at the same time, split pushing, putting damage on the top tower. They just gotta keep this up. Anti Mage has that battle fury, but he's got nothing else. He just doesn't have that fire. But this is gonna help him counter push a little bit. But at the rate that Zenith are pushing in, it's just too little, too late. They need to hold on for at least another 10 minutes before Anti Mage is even gonna be close to being relevant. Especially yeah, since you've got stuff like Cold Snap on your side. Oh yeah, I mean he needs to get that man style, probably even the Vlad's up as well. Uh, he's just going to need a few more items to before that. Can, you can push him over that edge where he can actually get involved and he can actually contribute here. He's just going to be trying to deal with that profit split push mostly in that top lane. But meanwhile, bottom lane, he can't really even help out his team. Blink in, once again, Blink clap, ES gets hooked in. Chuan going to go down, what a hook from Loader. And that could be the end of this tier 3 bottom tower now with ES down to the count. Not going to see any more Fissure Power Shot spam coming out. There's only going to be the Power Shots as well as those Blink Claps from the Panda Brewmaster. And 30 more seconds before the Brewmaster ultimate's up. So this should be at least a tower for Zenith here. Yeah, and as soon as they get the tower, that means they can just... It's just a relentless, grinding advance. Once they get that tower down, then they can sit on the high ground. They don't even need to sit all the way back down there. Once they get this tower down, they can keep moving up. And look at that. See, it's, it's all it takes. Just keep spamming these minions. Got Plague Wars, got Tree Puppets, got the Forge Spirits, although Loader actually holding onto his nukes at the moment. No, wait, no, he has Forge Spirits. Just decided not to use them. So they finally get that tower down. Pudge teleporting out. Again, defending. Making sure they don't give any money to this anti-mage. Just let him just keep hanging onto those towers. Anti-Mage is going, oh, screw it, screw trying to fight this. I'm dying in most fights. Let's just go. 
and farm and try and get ahead. But as it is, now they've lost the Serpent Wards as well. They're down. It's a good minute, more than a minute plus there. And now their Rax is very, very vulnerable. And again, guys, I think they're just going to keep pressing up, just going to keep using the Forge Grips, just really not going to expose themselves and just keep remotely pushing their, their bottom racks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, and I have to agree with what you said earlier. They've got time. They do not have to worry too much about this Antimage as of yet. He's going to get big. He's is sitting on 2.2k gold, but they've got a good 5-10 minutes where they can just chip away at bottom lane on the racks. They can have Profit keeping this top lane continuously pushed out, and Profit with the Sheepstick. If Antimage looks to just be the one who's sort of soloing that top lane, keeping it pushed out, all Prophet needs is one hero, whether it's Pudge, Invoker, maybe even Titan to come top with that Sheepstick, and they can get a kill on that Anti-Mage. Yeah, and then that's really going to upset him. As there we go, Titan actually shuttling out some wards. I would not be surprised to see him just sneak up and pop that up there on the high ground to make sure they get vision at all times. And it also gives them a better idea of what's going on inside the enemy base, and just gives them a better idea of which lanes to push. Anti-Mage, though. It looks like they're going to get ready to gank him in mid. Pudge has an invisibility rune and is looking just to pop the bite there. Or he could just mess that up there. This may not work out in the end. Although there's a sun strike. They missed time that just a little bit. Pudge, loader, jumping the gun. Had he waited like five seconds, it would have been an assured kill. But just went a little bit too early. He's going to see Invoker. Also, in fact, Invoker is about 800 gold away from his own sheep stick. And Nature's Prophet has one about now. So even if Andy Mage gets another big item up, he's looking at double sheep sticks in about the next five minutes that he has to deal with. And that oh, yeah. is going to be extremely painful. And it's like pretty much Andy Mage is the only farmed hero on the dice on the dice side. They've got a blink on Brumas, that's it. Windrunner has a mech, that's it. And of course ES and the Rasta have squat nothing. I'm going to look at the gold chart. He's got 10k advantage. This is the advantage of pushing really hard. You get a massive gold lead. And oh, also yeah. just make it towers there. Yeah. Six towers I mean, six towers is like eight, nine K gold right there. Mm. Right going to Xanth Pocket that IG have not been able to get. IG though, I mean they've got levels though. That's the one thing. They're not massively behind XP. They're actually ahead in terms of XP. And that shows on heroes like Brewmaster, who are very level dependent, having that level two ultimate as a, with a blink initiation can maybe keep these racks alive. Antimate hooked in, blinks out just in time though. Yeah, Loader doesn't manage to land the bite there in a sec. Oh, just in time. Doesn't really matter though, because again, they're just harassing him, and there we go. There's the remote push happening. A mess of Serpent Wards, Tree Puppets, Spoiled Spirits, and we got a green actually poured in there. Throws down the Fissure. Just trying to hold these. And let's see, he's not hitting any of these heroes. A hook in, doesn't hit anything. It's just very safe, and it's going to force IG to get aggressive. And they don't want to be aggressive. They've got an anti mage who cannot contribute at the moment. They've got Serpent Wards are up to see the Brewmaster. No, that's not Brewmaster, the anti mage blinking over there. And there goes the bottom melee racks working on the range racks now. And now they're just going to rotate to mid or top and do the exact same trick all over again. This oh is just yeah, and mm. it's just such a safe way to push as well because they can just stay so far back. They don't have to engage. They can look for pickles as cost with Pudge Hook, but then they're not, they're not going to go diving in. I mean, they can if they really want to with this Blink Dagger on tight under. They can go for a Blink Rabbit here, but it's something they may pay for if they're too aggressive considering that this dive team. They've got a four staff and a mech on where they can be fairly defensive, not to mention the ES Fishers and anti -Mage. Where is his next big item? Sing on 3.9k. He can straight up buy a BKB at the moment, but I've got to say, BKB with Battle Fury, that's just not enough. Ugh, I don't know, there's not enough DPS. Manta Silas is such a strong item on anti -Mage. He want He probably wants to go Manta Silas, but he may feel that he has to go for a BKB here. I think he has to. Between the bite from Pudge, the double sheep sticks, I don't think he's got much of an option. Or as well as the Cold Snap. So it's just so much disable. If he doesn't go BKB, he's going to be, even with the Manta, he's going to be completely ineffective during the fights. I feel, because it's just way too much lockdown. Maybe if he had some teammates that were relevant. Uh, Brewmaster is sort of, Brewmaster obviously has some relevance in these fights just because Primal Split at the moment is still really strong, but everybody else. Windrunner's got a power shot, but she's just not that big a force at the moment. Not compared to the combos that they're running right now on Xenith's side. It's pretty much anti major Brewmaster versus the world. See, level 1 Echo, even level 1 Echo Slime. Like, we haven't seen Urshik unleash a completely crippling Echo yet. Even with this mess of summons, they're just not close enough to it, and he just can't position himself where he needs to be. Oh, exactly. You can't just expect to walk in up against the Pudge, up against the Cold Snap as well, and uh, all those slows. It's not going to be something. If they, if they, if he tries to walk in, they may even just pop a Tide Grab just to make sure they kill him, because Urshaker, he's not going to be looking for an ulti really at all. His main role is just to be in the right position for those fishes. It's his main skill. It's his bread and butter. And uh, as far as skills go, it's, it's more important than having a big Echo Slam in these fights and in these holds here. As uh, Where is this Antimate? He's picked up a Yash. It is going to be a Manta up. He's got enough gold for that now, so we'll see the Manta being bought here. And uh, I, I think it's... I mean, you, I, I, in some ways I agree he's going to need BKB, but having no Manta style is basically saying 
it's basically almost giving up, saying, okay, we've got to go ultra defensive, but being too defensive will just be the end of IG. They've got to get their, the, the items up, which are the most effective in the team fight situation, which is going to be that Manta style. And maybe he could hope the illusions would confuse him for a bit, but then again, there's just Ravage. Ravage is just such a showstopper. It's gonna, and it's also with the damage, it's going to reveal which is the real anti mage. And then once he gets hexed, it's lights out. It's complete and utter lights out. Unless Brewmaster can protect him, like it's really going to come down to quarter inch. If they have any hope at all, it's going to come down to Raster, Brewmaster, Windrunner, and Urshay just protect him during that fight. They've got the stuns to do it. I just don't know if they can survive long enough, especially the Ravage issue. Like we saw, they made a good push, push out an uh, initiation against Zenith, but then immediately timed and blink in, Ravage, and then they lost the fight after that. Just a counter initiation there, slowed things down, and then allowed Zenith to refocus the fight. There they go, then jump in on ice. Here comes a Ravage or not, he gets stunned by the shackle. That's exactly what they needed. Then IG going to fight back here. There goes the ultimate there from uh, from the Venomancer. Echo Slam goes down to ES. Doesn't do a whole lot. It's currently Windrunner with a double kill, taking both the Invoker and the Pudge. I think. Orange, uh, in, oh, not Orange, sorry, Zenith. Need to back up here, although it looks like XY as well as X Freedom in some serious trouble. Tidehunter going to get chased down by the Anti Mage more than likely. And I've got to say, that fight completely saved by Windrunner. If she had not managed to oh, land yeah. that shackle on that tide, that would have gone a very, that would have been a very different show just then. Probably may have even turned that around for a win. Also, should mention that Furion did not show up to the fight, he was busy pushing bottom. Yeah. Well, he put, he TP'd bottom just recently, just okay. towards that. When, as soon as that fight went bad, that he TP'd in that bottom lane. He didn't really accomplish all that much. He chipped away on these T4 towers, which is actually still taking a bit of damage here. One of them getting down to about half HP. But it looks like IG want to get their first tower of the game 29 minutes in. We are going to see a tower going IG's way. But that big fight, like you said, Windrunner, absolutely amazing play. As, uh, there we go. Windrunner actually going to get the tower as well. But uh, YYF, he is one of those players. No one for his solo mid capabilities back with LGD. Then he switched on over to the carry role for a while, but he is just such a strong solo carry player and uh, is really helping out IG a lot here. HY, HY, looking for a gank, not going to get the sheep and into a hook there, only... That was a smart uh, play. Just Unfortunately, he didn't quite pull it off. He was a little bit too early and nobody quite managed to follow up, but it was a very smart, daring play. They didn't quite manage to pull it off, though. Just the whole throw the trees down, get vision, hex through the trees, and then... Follow up, just nobody managing to land the stun after that. But as it is, I think Zenith are definitely ready to push in. And this time, there's any time to hang back a little bit further. Make sure it's kind of like the whole VS versus the Enigma deal. Need to make sure he's back there to counter initiate if necessary, not get picked off by that shackle. And that's, I think that last that last team fight was a class was an example of what I was just talking about. As long as they can protect the anti mage, he can deliver the damage. And that shackle was exactly what they needed at the right moment. XY needs to be careful. They're going to move in on him. He's actually running for his life. Blinks away. I think he's saying muster over here. I need some help. So Orange is pinging away there. God, it looks like anti badge. He's finally picking up some steam. He's got the Mantis style done and dusted. I just feel against the mess. The absolute mess of sheep sticks. He's going to be, have some trouble. Although that's it's not that far away from a BKB. If he gets that, then Zenith are going to struggle, I feel. Oh, yeah. And, and right now you can see what well, these Chinese teams, they really don't mind not having those big blink ES ulties. Chuan's actually picking up a couple of braces here just to tank himself up. He'll help his mana pool a bit as well, but rather than going for the arcane boots, he does he boosts up his mana pool, not quite as much, but just a couple of braces. Gets five buildings. Hook in. Ferrari. Four stuffs away. He needs to pull that ultimate. Is there enough damage? He's not gonna get his ulti off. He fires back immediately. They will lose the Tide Hunter in exchange. But IG taking a lot of damage from the Venomanta ultimate as well. Ferrari though going on the aggressive with a blink in. He's not gonna find anyone though. And it looks like Zenith have forced a buyback from the Brewmaster, and they can just back off following that. The blinks from Anti Mage as well as Brewmaster trying to hunt down Ice. Ice already changes to Ghost Walk here. Doesn't look like we have any sentries or dust anywhere nearby, as uh, that will be an escape. And Prophet backdooring. Well, not so much backdooring, but it's actually TP'd in, going for those T4 towers. And it looks like one of these T4 towers taking a lot of damage may get near den deny range. They actually bring down the Invoker there in the end, although he buys back, and it looks like they're on the counter-attack. I think he was actually, he refused to Ghost Walk. He was just trying to buy time for his team, and there we go. He's made them overextend. Nature's Prophet is here. Ferrari in some serious trouble, though. Joe moves in, throws down the, oh, goes to the Mad Style. Primal Split as well. HY, HY, gonna regret this. Gets hit by a rock and cleaned up by anti Mage, and now it is anti Mage's time. He's gonna cause some hell. Nature's Prophet buying back. He's in the mix. There's Ice, has returned to the fight. Venomancer trying to fight this out, but it looks like the Earth Panda is retreating. I hear Pudge biting some Somebody, it's Joe, he blinks away anyway, manages to escape. Meanwhile, Invoker, still in the world around in the air there. Did they get the anti-match? They did actually manage to clean him up in the end there. Yeah. Prophet TP's in, gets, snipes the kill, and uh, 
That's a big kill, killing that Antimate. He's got buyback, but Antimate at this point in the game cannot afford to use any of his golden buyback. He the needs to get all the go items he can get, and there we go. He buys back just because this throne, these tier 4 towers are under pressure, and they need to alleviate some of that. They've got to defend top, and they've also got to push out bottom lane. There's just pressure coming in from all sides now, and with Antimates down, it's just not something they can prevent from happening. Prof are going to TP bottom. Look to keep this bottom lane continuously pushed out. Antimate at mid needs to be careful here. Gonna blink down to the secret shop and is he picking up a vitality booster? I think he's going for a maybe kill. Maybe gonna go for that. Maybe going for that. Oh, I don't think he can. <laughs> I don't think he can get a solo kill on that prophet. It looks like he's just gonna get get the hell out of there. Get away from uh, the incoming gank on mid lane. Push out this bottom lane and then blink back to base. He needs to get out quickly as uh, the rotation is coming from Zenith. I'm gonna, already hanging I'm down gonna say, the bottom if lane. Prophet can get some, if gets, Prophet gets some damage on him, he's actually gonna be able to go toe to toe with the anti magic field. Especially since he's already got the Hex, he's got the Hand of Midas, so he's got some decent attacks, although he's lacking treads right now. If he gets treads and a damage on him, I think he can go toe to toe with his anti mage, similar to the way we see Queen of Pains handle it, although not quite as well, just because he lacks some mobility in the actual fight itself. Yep, and uh... I mean, both teams using buybacks. It's not like it, it's not like it's just Antimage you lost a big chunk of gold there. I mean, Invoker as well as Profit both bought back there. But I mean, both heroes probably quite happy with their farm. Both having finished their sheep sticks up, but we're not going to be seeing any massive items coming all that fast. HYH has got a level one Necro book here. Uh, going to be inching close to that Necro book three, just using that whenever possible, just to keep on chipping away at the IG base. I mean, you can see one T4 tower already down. This T3 tower at top taking a lot of damage. With this split push, IG. They really need a big anti mage, and he's seeing on 2k gold. I mean, he may. Uh, I mean, it's going to come down to does he just suck it up and say, okay, I'm going to get BKB, or does he look to just get another big item up to help deal with the, this split push? The problem is it's not really 2k gold, because at this point in game, he has to sit on money for buybacks. Like, he's still, it's 2.3 two minutes, yeah. so two and a half minutes away, but so by the time he has cash up anyway, he's still got to save for that buyback. He needs to always have yeah. some ready to go. Unless, unless they're really on their last legs, because right now it's only one Rax down. So it's not mission critical yet, it's definitely an undesirable position, but they can come back from this without too much trouble. This yeah, isn't, this isn't yeah. horrendous. The problem is, always, as an anti mage you just need those big items. It's not like you've got two core items from anti and battle for you that you can just sort of sit back and say, okay, I can save for buyback now. anti mage needs another big item. And I think if he's, just has, if he's using the mentality where he needs to have buyback gold, it's going to be a losing fight for them. They're actually... Gonna try getting ages for him, and that's something which will allow him to especially get new items. He's picked up Vitality Boost, so we're gonna see a heart coming on Anti Mage. I like this pickup here. BKB is good against the Sheep Stick, but a heart just for the raw HP. Uh, maybe he'll still go for a BKB, could just keep the Vitality Booster for the survivability it gives. And IG, they're gonna go into the Roshan Pit. The Forward Spirit just expired that second. IG was smoked up right by the Forward Spirit. The Forward Spirit expires, and now IG are gonna get Roshan. Smoke coming from Zenth, they're on their way. Will IG get it quick enough? It looks like they should, and then they'll be able to blink out. Even the Serpent Ward's being popped, just to take Roshan as quickly as possible. This is going to be tight. Pudge, hook in, hits the Antimage. Antimage calls the Manta, he's been dismembered though. There's the Ravage. It doesn't look like there's enough damage. Yes, there is. Antimage's going to go down, so does Shadow Shaman. This goes absolutely horribly for IG. is going to pop the ultimate, but he's just using that to try to get the hell out of there and none of Zenith taking any damage whatsoever. They have just found themselves a fantastic fight, all on the back of Loda hooking out the Antimate, preventing did, him from getting that. Did day. they actually deny the Aegis? I didn't see who picked that up. I think it might have been denied. I... I think it was denied. I can't see anybody having picked it up, so... I think, I think the Plague Wars... Wars? I think the Plague yeah, Wars yeah. must have got it. Especially since they wouldn't have wanted it. They probably really were hoping Antimate could blink back in and pick it up, maybe. And also, actually no, it would have, because Titan went in there with the Ravage. Even though they got the kill, Titan would have slowed it down with the Ravage. And then the Plague Wars probably would have picked that up. But I didn't see exactly who got that in the middle of all that. But meanwhile, they are losing the mid-racks, and this is a big issue. Anti-Mage is down, doesn't have the cash for a buyback, or even if he did, it is still one minute on cooldown. So there we go, gonna lose this mid rack and now it is looking pretty much GG. And I've got to tell you, Zenith have played a hell of a game, and it looked pretty bad for them at the start. It was a ridiculous start. But they really picked it up. In the end, mutually assured destruction works out for them. Oh yeah, and uh, just it's one of those things. I mean, these Chinese teams do not seem to deal well with Pudge. I mean, a well-played Pudge. We've seen Dandy do it. We're now seeing Loader do it, and uh, it's just causing them problems. It's these hooks. I mean, even when they can see it coming, it just forces them back, and they can't defend their towers when you're up against the Pudge. And that's something that the Chinese teams they struggle and they're, they're not in a position to defend these aggressive pushes like we're seeing from Zenith. They, they crumble and that's what has happened to IG.
I'm going to say if there's any Chinese team on board with this, I think DK, as well as E-Home, will fare relatively well against this kind of strategy, because they're really on board with the whole pushing early business. I think I think it's more IG, because they are, of all the Chinese teams available around at the moment, they're still relatively defensive, and still quite turtle happy at times. Yeah, and... Uh uh, yeah, I've got to agree. RG have, uh, what, they, I mean, they, they picked up an Antimage. They picked up Antimage in a, a, a large number of their games as of late. And it's mm. something that it has been working out well for them. They beat E-Home. Uh, but this game round, this time round, Zenith just taking the fight to them. And uh, we'll get the win. As uh, We're going to go into game number two, though. IG have to win it to stay alive. Zenith looking to get the 2-0. As uh, we will be getting right into that. It must be getting late for some of these players. I know it's damn late for you. Game <laughs> number two should be up soon. <laughs> the sun will be up in an hour or two indeed. But I have caffeine, so I'm feeling alright. Anyway guys, so going into game two, we'll see